friends i am rahul pathak and i am here for the making of the malazma files i am here at taj bengal to pick up dr abhishek day and he is a upcoming dermatologist from kolkata and we will see that how dr abhishek day gives a beautiful glowing skin to all his patients hi rahul hi sir good to see you all set for the malazma files oh yes oh yes sir So finally, me and Dr. Abhishek Day are in uh, in the front of the Victoria, and we would be discussing deep about the melasma, and I'm sure that Dr. Day would be able to give us loads of insights. And let us see what all those secrets are there, which are yet to be you know known and which are not known, and it would be really be very helpful for young dermatologists and everybody. So, Dr. Day, the first question which comes to my mind is melasma, right? And uh, melasma rebounds what is the kind of psychological impact which the patient goes through and yes sir kabhi you know whether it really does it ever go away a very uh, interesting question see basically the problem with melasma that you know in people of colors like ours the melasma can be very dark and very tricky and of course it sometimes goes away uh, after a long long period of time the problem is now if suppose for a woman who started having melasma at the age of 25 and at the age of 45 or 50 it goes away but this takes away a very high quality period of your life so just okay. sabse important part hai na life mein jahan pe aapko sundar dikhna hai agar us time pe aapko itna tarah ka melasma hote hai to that becomes a very tricky issues for most of our patients और एक चीज़ याद रखना पड़ेगा कि जो मिलसमा होता कहाँ पे है फेस में होता है जो सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट विजिबल पार्ट ऑफ ये फेस आपको देखने से तो सबसे पहले फेस ही नजर आता है ना तो इस सबसे ह्यूज इम्पैक्ट है तो क्वालिटी ऑफ लाइफ आई हैव सीन पीपल ड्रॉपिंग आउट फ्रॉम कॉलेज आई हैव सीन पीपल यू नो नॉट गेटिंग मैरिड बिकॉज ऑफ मेलासमा आई गेट पीपल गेट गेटिंग डिवोर्स because of melasma so you know given the social context of our country and given how um, problem we have with you know our own darker skin uh, melasma can be a real real challenge in today's uh, social context of india so uh, in that case uh, there are loads of uh, uh, market is flooded with lot of drugs lot of creams which are there uh what is how do you how do you tackle such patients and uh, what is your take on the triple combinations which we have see uh, first of all um, of course the market is flooded with lot of otc product and also prescription product which is being sold without doctor's prescription so that is something i would always say ki, you know uh, you have to be uh, careful most of this uh, otc products are useless they are like you know very um a uh, very you know high priced moisturizer or uh, useless product as long as it was useless it was fine still but problem is now these otc products also comes in the you know some of them comes in the herbal background or basically they contain steroids and uh, hydroquinone which can be really harmful uh, if you are using it you know without a doctor's prescription or either proper guidelines of doctors okay and that is being increasingly increasingly used in india uh not only for melasma but as a whole for uh, you know uh, as a whole for fairness which is uh, really odd um so this is something uh, we need to be very you know careful and we are trying to generate a lot of awareness about it, you know potential abuse of steroids and hydroquinone kind of things given that uh, if you talk about the prescription drugs of course in uh, modern uh, time we have a lot of things we have moved beyond triple combination now is triple combination bad no if it's used judiciously still like uh, one of the best uh, uh, treatment for uh, melasma the problem is the patient misuses it uh, suppose a doctor uh, is given uh, the triple combination is for 3 weeks but uh, in india since once you get a result with triple combination nobody wants to stop with the triple combination and then they keep on using steroids for long long period of time and that uh, leads to you know problem with all the side effects of steroids and hydroquinone 
this is one part and another part is a uh, lot of uh, triple combination is available which is very potent steroids like you know momentum containing triple combination uh, like clobidazole co um, com, uh, containing triple combination and that is another part where we need to be extremely careful ah, so choosing your triple combination carefully and using very judiciously can be a very important thing in the treatment of melasma so there is there is a menace of these steroids currently in india so how many such cases do you find and how do you counsel such patients when they say that sir because patients are not aware and uh, you know you prescribe them and it is coming from you so how do you manage such cases how do you counsel your patients see uh, first of all uh, you know why this steroid abuse has happened because possibly lots of doctors including gps and gynecologists and everybody has written steroids you know uh, plentifully and then it is still getting prescribed un under you know uh, i mean without the prescription as an otc product however if you see uh, that now that most of the steroid combination products now has this you know uh, a statutory warning kind of things i i could see that you know it, uh, even maybe 5 6 years back the steroid abuse was uh, really plentiful really the menace was uh, really terrifying बट स्लोली देखते हैं ना कि अभी धीरे धीरे शायद लोगों में थोड़ा सा कॉन्शियसनेस डेवलप कर रहा है अभी तो देख रहा हूँ कि मैं एक तरह से कुछ कुछ लोगों में स्पेशली काइंड ऑफ प्रैक्टिस आई है इन द सिटीज इन ऑफ वेरी अर्बन पीपल एंड हु आर वेरी गूगल फ्रेंडली दे हैव ए डेवलप ए काइंड ऑफ यू नो रिवर्सल ऑफ दैट दे हैव एक्चुअली डेवलप स्टेडर्ड फोबियाज सो वी हैव टू Trade things differently. Different people are there of this, uh, our society in different segments. Um, both are uh, problematic. But in melasma treatment, what I have done in last seven or eight is uh, eight years, I have slowly shifted away from triple combination as a whole and shifted away from. Uh, of course, I never wrote mometazone containing triple combination. But as a whole, I am not writing any steroid hydrocodone these days. So what what is your choices if the triple combination is not there? your choice and uh, you know the patient goes haywire and uh, you know uses it so what are your choices of the non hydroquinone formulations what 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 are the key ingredients choices of the creams which you know doesn't have the steroids abhi aapko samajhna padega ki na melasma is multifactorial पहले क्या होता था ना स्टेरॉइड्स आई मीन क्यों दिया जाता था या फिर ऑल अदर थिंग्स क्यों दिया जाता था क्योंकि और इस टू थिंक दैट पिगमेंट इज द ओनली प्रॉब्लम इन मिलास्मा नाउ वी अंडरस्टैंड सो मेनी अदर थिंग्स इन मिलास्मा यू नो अल्ट्रा वायलेट सेंसिटिविटी इज देयर दे आर आर वास्कुलर एलिमेंट्स इन मिलास्मा दे आर आर पिगमेंट एलिमेंट्स इन मिलास्मा सो लोड्स ऑफ थिंग्स यू नीड टू बी टेकन केयर ऑफ लाइफ स्टाइल इशूज इन मिलास्मा सो द ट्रीटमेंट हैजू बी हॉलिस्टिक ओवरऑल सो सनस्क्रीन हैज टू बी दैर नाउ we kind of understand only giving ultraviolet a protection is not good enough for melasma lot of people expose themselves to visual uh, uh, lights and you know, blue lights kind of things who use a uh, computer for long period of time so you have to even choose your um, uh, sunscreen carefully there has to be you know some amount of infrared uh, protection so all this tinted sunscreen that these days we have for melasma possibly has an age of other standard conventional uh, uh, sunscreen so even a sunscreen choice is important i use a lot of physical element in the sunscreen because this kind of protects against all the uh, wavelength of uh, 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 wavelength you know electromagnetic you will see ultraviolet and infrared and visible light all together so this is more of a holistic protection uh, in melasma so physical sunscreen at least the physical element in the sunscreen i always choose uh, properly so that uh, it has to be covered and another thing lot of our patient use sunscreen once a day and that is not good enough we have to use sunscreen 3 to 4 times uh, you know 3 to 4 hours uh, hourly if you go to snow or sand or you know see then you have to use sunscreen even more rigorous your sunscreen is key element for the treatment of melasma and hydroquinone can be used still but it has to be low potent like something like 2% hydroquinone is a very high quality hydroquinone can be used but for a shorter dose i do not use hydroquinone if i at all use not more than 3 months uh, at a stretch okay and what other molecules i prefer i use a lot of uh, uh, kojic acid lot of uh, arbutin so these are the standard molecule we used to use there are lot of combination but one uh, caution about the combination sometimes you know this uh, combinations may hai to bahut sara cheez lekin percentage bahut low low hai 
Hmm. So we need to find out ki whether the you know whether hmm. the kojic acid is delivered in the right concentration or not also. So doctor has to choose the uh, you know ingredients carefully. However, right at this moment I am finding an excellent result with one molecule called silymarin. So it's it's kind of game changer as far as topical treatment of melasma. I am using a lot of uh, uh, silymarin. I use vitamin C a lot because overall the you know collagen rejuvenation vitamin C you uh, give a age over uh, other things. So since we understand that it's not only um, on not only pigmentation, there are so many other elements in melasma. Uh, maybe tranexamic acid topically can be given, uh, especially in patient where we do not give oral tranexamic acid. So these are the things we need to choose from. The basket is huge, and you have to pick and choose according to your patient's need. So so sir, after a rigid topical treatment. uh you know when you when you choose for going for chemical peeling when you choose for going for laser treatment there are multiple lasers currently these days in india and uh, you know i would like to understand what how helpful are these lasers in treatment of melasma when when do you when do you go for it see if you uh, see the conventional melasma guidelines laser is not the first step of your treatment okay it's usually it is the third step uh, step of your melasma management the problem is that i mean you know, in a urban dermatologist like us so, uh, where the patient doesn't come naive patient they come already they have treated by lot of other doctors they have used all those things you know creams and you know uh, ointments maybe even chemical pill they have done but those people come to us by the time is already 2 3 4 years old melasma they have tried a host of things and then they are coming to us that is the more usual scenario so we cannot just wait you know when will be going to the guidelines one two three step one because the patient is already depressed already frustrated and has a very poor quality of life so many a times what we do uh, we start uh, laser treatment or our other you know procedural treatment as we start treating with other molecules like i always combine and i think for many of aesthetic problems and medical problem even in medical problem like dermatological problem combination is the way to go so you have to use your sunscreen i use a lot of topicals but in topicals i these days uh, use non hydroquinone non steroid based non triple combination you know because we can give it for longer period of time that's one issue and i have seen that irritant topicals like hydroquinone or tretinoin actually damages the prognosis more so i am shifting to a non irritant uh, uh, topicals you know like arbutin maybe vitamin c or maybe silymarin all those product we have already discussed so these things i choose uh, i give adequate coverage of that give uh, try to give oral tranexamic acid whenever i find in dermatos with a lot of vascular elements is there so that is another important uh, el- uh, you know uh, uh, chink i mean uh, important addition to my uh, uh, melasma treatment and i start some kind of procedures and even in procedure i always combine so i if we do lasers uh, i do lot of types of laser but then suppose in laser i can combine with qc india laser uh, with you know some non ablative uh, lasers sometimes i use qc india laser with prp treatment or gfc treatment uh, i use hifu with uh, with uh, with um, qc laser so there are a lot of combinations happen and most of the times you have to choose pick and choose your uh, treatment carefully depending on the patient's need depending on what the patient has already treated for okay so like are there particular you know laser manufacturers or companies you prefer you know to go for because there are many young do- dermatologists who would be setting up their aesthetic clinics which which brands do you prefer when you talk about lasers and uh, how do you how do you choose your patients when you know you are giving a particular if if it is a male melasma or if it is a female kind of a melasma or it is a number of years which the patient has gone through melasma when do you when do you go for lasers and what are the key manufacturers or brands you will like to you know go for lasers see uh, there are a couple of thing we need to understand first let us talk about the technologies uh, rather than the brands okay um so most commonly used uh, uh, um, uh, lasers in melasma treatment is qc india laser uh, i think most of india use qc india laser now here i want to uh, talk about certain points qc india in this conventional mode uh, is not that effective in melasma and can sometimes be harmful in you know darker people like us what is conventional mode where they use high flu, uh, high peak power and along with that uh, they use you know small uh, small uh, spot size like you know 3 to 4 mm spot size that's the kind of conventional mode 
we do not use QCG India anymore this way. So what is the standard mode of QCG India used now? Now we use low fluence laser toning mode. What is that? This is light, large spot size, usually 8 to 10 millimeter spot size we use. We use a, a very low fluence, something like 850 millijoules uh, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in 850 millijoules kind of power we use and then use repetitive pa uh, passes over the entire zone. We do not treat only on the melasma because if you see in dermatoscopy or even uh, if you use uh, um, if you use you know ultraviolets to see uh, the woods lamp like you know uh, then you can see that melasma whatever pigmentation you see actually the pigment it is much beyond that so we always have to treat the interface holistically so QCG India Glager of course remains one of the uh, large workhorse in our uh, treatment of melasma however last four five years people have seen that you know not only pigment laser but also the lasers which has a overall uh, rejuvenation of collagen that has a very uh, important role so people in western countries also use ability blazer something like you know fractional co2 laser or you know uh, uh, fractional rbm yag laser the problem here is a lot of indian patients tend to develop uh, pigmentation like pih post impurity hyperpigmentation with all those fractional lasers so in those scenarios what we do we use a lot of non-ablative laser and if you see the recent studies all suggest that non-ablative laser age over all other laser including um, including basically even QCG lasers so i do a lot of combination i use QCG and laser and i use also a rbm uh, glass fiber laser to combine and to give the my patient the best uh, best result and you can combine even in the same session that is one good part of it what are the brands I use for QCG India glazers? I, I always prefer, you know, either of the two products. One, I, I love Alma Q laser, which is an Alma, you know, Lumen, Alma device. Another product I use is by, is by Spectra XT. Uh, this is uh, another Israeli band, which is, uh, you know, uh, possibly one of the gold standard of laser technologies now. So these are the two main uh, QC India laser. I have used some other uh, devices also. Uh, one from Skin Ovations, uh, which is a Korean brand, but one of the better Korean brands in India. So those are the things I use. Uh, so I have you know, three lasers in my practice, QC laser in my practice. For the uh, uh, for the laser uh, in you know uh, for for uh, non ability laser, I use a. Uh, uh, typical device which is called Resurfix and this is a very good device from Luminis again a uh, Israel company Israel makes a very good quality laser so one of the best uh, country to get laser from is from Israel so Luminis lasers I trust a lot for many other devices but here I am talking about a device called Resurfix which is basically a non ablative device RBM glass fiber devices and that is uh, gives me a very good result overall for the treatment of melasma so most of the time i combine spectra xt with uh, resurface laser and that's what kind of my secret for my melasma patients as far as laser therapy is concerned so you have i heard you doctor that uh, you have been combining multiple lasers whether it is nda why uh, uh, NDA uh, crew switch nda laser rbm glass lasers and uh, then you have uh, you know uh, use combinations so uh, still you know the laser markets have been going the technology have been expanding what do you still find are you know pitfalls and what could enhancements further enhancement could be done for you know to you know for uh, you know lasers or how do you you know what do you see the procedural fit, pit, pitfalls in the laser treatment see there are other uh, devices which has started showing a lot of results in uh, melasma uh, they have uh, introduced QCG NDA laser in a 650 na uh, uh, nanometer uh, um, pulse switch so that is something can be interesting for melasma and uh, sorry 650 millisecond pulse switch uh, that can be interesting for uh, melasma what is uh, more interesting there are lasers like copper bromide laser there are uh, uh, lasers like tulium laser that is also going, giving good results for uh, uh, melasma patients in western countries now here comes the catch you know lot of this is suppose you know you talk about a copper bromide laser theoretically it should be the best laser for uh, melasma it has two wavelengths one tackles the pigment one tackles the uh, one tackles the vascular element so you know it sounds like it should be good but i find the wavelength is too low for indian sort of patient so many of this you know literature which is coming for the western skin where is a caucasian type 1 2 3 
and we see usually type 4 or type 5 this laser may not be that uh, safe for using in Indian patients so that is another catch one interesting paper came in uh, Korea that is another thing we need to keep in mind uh, not to be over enthusiastic of use of lasers in melasma that is shows you know what happens in melasma there is something called pendulous melanocytes those melanocytes from epidermis hangs in the dermis and there have been some suggestions that if you give too high fluences uh, laser uh, then it can actually push the uh, melanocyte into the dermis and actually now you have a complicated mode because you now have a dermal melanocytes mode so you can actually make your epidermal uh, melasma into a dermal melasma and you can uh, lead to a bigger trouble so and moreover in indian skin what I have seen with uh, other uh, people, especially junior people, people uh, we are like, you know, recent user of melasma, uh, lasers in melasma, and also people who have been using um, lasers which is not so good quality. Some Chinese or Korean band which is not so good quality, or Indian bands also not so good quality. Those people use uh, 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 beams which is not top hat beam, and this has a lot of spikes and that tend to leave depigmentation so very ugly white spots comes in between the uh, melasma which actually look even worse than the melasma used to be and this is the hardest part this depigmentation is very very difficult to treat if it, it can be treated at all so you need to be careful judicious always has to choose a uh, right band the some of the brands i have already mentioned but there are brands beyond that also which is also good but it should be have good quality data or evidences for western countries the challenges is we need to develop our own data also uh, in india the problem is we do not generate enough data so that is something we need to keep in mind all the people who you know in institutional practice you know medical colleges they should uh, publish a lot develop our own uh, data develop our own consensus so that we also uh, i mean for the next generation they can know what would be the most safest mode of treatment uh, for the melasma with, with using the best lasers <clears throat> when when still you know you find such certain cases where pih has developed and how do you counsel because patient would be you know you already would be uh, you know given a topical treatment to that very patient and then when you see that you know the patient has developed pigmentation how do you counsel and do you find like uh, such cases do happen in your uh, in your clinical practice so first of all you have to choose your uh, um, patient very carefully a lot of patient can be unreliable you know you patient are not using sunscreen properly patient are going to you know uh, mall leaves or beach parties uh, and uh, not informing you and you don't know next day he comes and doc may uh, laser toning card do. but these patients can land you a lot of troubles okay so be careful you know what kind of patient what is their lifestyle how much smoking they are doing whether they are actually using sunscreen or whether they can actually a lot of people have an outdoor door, uh, jobs and it can be very difficult for them to use sunscreen regularly so you have to be very careful and I will always tell the uh, you know new generation uh, doctor so, you know, make sure that is melasma is already stable you give your oral treatment you give your topical you give your sunscreen don't hurry into procedures once you have the stabilized the melasma then the residual dermal pigmentation can be tackled by uh, laser better but laser cannot be your only modality of treatment and that's when things can be uh, wrong so if you do your choose your parameters carefully if you choose your patient carefully it's very increasingly unlikely to have you know melasma which will lead to a pih but if happens then we need to understand that pih can be treated pH can be treated by you know your topicals, pH you can topic uh, treated by your you know even laser toning also can be done. So you have to handhold your patient, you have to make it understand that this pigmentation has happened, which should not have been happened, but it will go off in three to uh, six months and you uh, should be you know using so and so cream. Sometimes you can give some of the freebie samples to the patient also and pH always goes off. Great, great, great. So, uh, doctor, what do you combine? Any any kind of oral oral adjuvant which you wish to combine? Vitamin E, vitamin C, or uh, tranexamic acid? Uh, what what are your choices? How do you and in what kind of doses do you give it? What kind of concentrations do you use when you talk about uh, tranexamic acid? You know, uh, in combination with lasers. And what are your choices of uh, oral adjuvants? So, as I said, till, uh, as I told you that uh, we always combine. Uh, we always combine oral and topical and sunskin uh, treatment along with the procedural treatment. I will talk about transcendence in details uh, some other other time. Uh, however, uh, I, I must say I have been using it for last 
2030. So it must be last nine, ten years. Yeah. And I am a huge fan of the molecule. I think it's a game changing molecule. So how, what are the tests I do? What are the patient I look for? That will, uh, uh, I mean, they'll be in details later. But here, let us talk about some other uh, uh, energy-based device combinations, uh, which I can I can combine with my uh, with my you know fuses lasers. So sometimes in certain patients, uh, I have seen that high two and now studies also show high two. Uh, you do for some other purpose like. Most of the time, I do not do HIFU as a primary modality treatment for melasma. But suppose the patient has a jawline which is a little saggy, you have a double chin, and you do the treatment for HIFU, the lower phase, and you see the melasma uh, being taken care of. So that happens. You, you do acne scars treatment with microneedling radio frequency, you see your melasma goes up. That happens. So, you know, you do tightening with your uh, radio frequency device, you see melasma, uh, um, uh, melasma dissolves. So that also we have seen and studies have started showing that these energy based devices also work in the treatment of melasma. So I must say that you know we are just scratching uh, the surface of the understanding of melasma treatment. We have a lot of toys to play with but I think we need to go in much more details uh, and you know categorize the patient uh, and then choose a devices carefully at this moment. Uh, the questions people can ask you what uh, uh, what are the you know uh, what are the melasma you will be uh, using your Q switch what are the melasma you will be doing uh, these other devices we do not have clear cut direct uh, over there we always you know kind of go for trial and error method or it's better to combine because some of the devices will work better than some of the other patients uh, but some point of time we will understand that even in the melasma morphology there are a lot of subtypes are there and some treatment is good for some and some treatment is good for some some other patient with the advent of dermatoscopy now one problem with melasma we cannot always do biopsy you know it's in the face we cannot do biopsy so biopsy is not doable but dermatoscopy is there I do a lot of dermatology to identify the patient of where triaxin acid will work. So similarly someday we will understand which laser, which energy based devices will work better on what sort of patients in melasma and we can choose our devices accordingly. Uh, thank you so much. Now further what innovations Dr. Day does. I am sure Dr. Day will choose another new location. This is Victoria and we will say, we'll be saying goodbye and we'll, I am sure that we will be hearing you at some different location in Kolkata. Sure. Thank you.